Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another GMT4 video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a brief first tutorial of how to Dockerize GMT4. So if you guys aren't familiar with what Docker is, Docker is a really nice environment that lets you deploy containers. A Docker container is a lightweight package containing your program as well as any dependencies, programs, basically a lightweight operating system included in there as well. So a Docker container should be able to run on any operating system. If you're on a Windows, a Mac, you just open up the Docker container and it's got everything it needs inside so it can run on your computer. So for Jant for development, Docker is very useful. Not only is it really good for deploying your Jant for application so anyone can use it, but you can also use Docker to develop using Jant for. If we use Jant for with Docker, we can skip the whole process of installing Jant for, which is very complicated. It can take a couple hours. With Docker, we can set it up in just a couple minutes. So if you guys want to read over this tutorial, I have it on this website. I'll put it in the description. Um, it's my radiation modeling website. It's here under the article called Dockerizing Jant 4. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using Windows 11, uh, Docker version 24.0.5, and VS Code. But the general principles should work on any computer as long as you're pretty familiar with how Docker works. So to get started here, first we need to make sure we have Docker Desktop installed. Basically, this is the Docker daemon, and you're going to need this to run any Docker containers. So on Windows, you just go to Do just Google search for Docker, and here on the Docker website, you can get started, download Docker Desktop, and I already have it downloaded, so I'll just open it right now. Okay, so here's Docker desktop running, and basically this is the runtime that allows you to run your containers. So if you don't know Docker, I'd suggest going over these tutorials that they provide. It's really nice to get started, but really fast crash course. Basically, you want to create a Docker image, and the image is all the instructions for your Docker container, like what dependencies to install, what files to include where, and what environment variables to set, stuff like that. And then once you have your image built, you can start a container using that image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run Jant4 in a container. So we don't even have to install Jant4 on our machine. Now right here I have a example Jant4 application that we're going to use. So if you're on a Windows computer like me, I highly recommend using Visual Studio Code. VS Code just has some tools for Docker development that are really useful, especially when getting started. Okay, so here's our directory. We're going to Dockerize this Jant4 application. So first thing we need on VS Code to make this really easy is we want to download the extension called Dev Containers. So I'll look up Dev. There you go. Here it is. So dev containers, we can install this extension. So let's go back to our directory. And if we're going to create a Docker image, we need to create a new file called Docker file. So here's our Docker file. So we can also install the Docker extension. This will make syntax highlighting and it'll be nice when we build our Docker file. So here's our Docker file. And basically the layout of a Docker file is you would start with from and we want to put a base image. So most of the time you'll do some kind of uh, Linux distribution here, like Ubuntu or something like that. Um, usually put latest for the version, but you can specify a version like 0.1.0, something. I'm not sure the exact syntax there, but if you have a specific version, it's nice to put it there. Then you'd have other instructions down below to set up your environment. Now, for a quick example, let's say we want to create a Python environment. So if we were to do this, I have a sample here. We start with a Linux distro right here, and then we're going to run these Linux commands to install some of these packages that we want. Then we're going to get Python from its website. We're going to extract Python and then configure and compile Python down here. And then once we have this, we can have a container that's running Python. Now, if we want to skip all this, luckily Python has an official Docker image and basically their image will look kind of like this. It'll install Python, compile it, stuff like that. But we can replace all this with a simple from Python. 
then we can put latest for the version. And that's equal to exactly what we just wrote. So as far as GNAP4 goes, GNAP4 actually has an official Docker image as well. So here on Docker Desktop, we can even see it. We can look up here and search. So we search GNAP4. And the first one here is the official GNAP4 image. So it says it contains a full installation of GNAP4 11.0.3. All right, so let's say we want to create an environment for our test GAMP4 application. All I have to do is do from GAMP4, GAMP4, and there we go. So with just this one line of code, we basically are inheriting from the entire Docker image that GAMP4 has made for us. So now if we run our application over here in this container, we'll have GAMP4 environment set up so that we can run our application. Now I'll show you guys how to open this directory in the Docker container using VS Code. It's really simple. Since we have that dev containers extension, we're gonna go down here to the bottom left corner. It says open a remote window, this little button with the little arrows. Click on that. And then there's this option that says reopen in container. So we're gonna click on this and then it gives you some options. If we wanna do a predefined container, we can choose from all of these containers that it's given to us, like a .NET container or a Linux container. But instead, we're gonna go back here and choose the second option from Dockerfile. And that's gonna open it in this Dockerfile that we've created. So you go down here, reopen container. We'll do from Dockerfile. We can skip this um, to create a password. We, for our purposes, we don't need a password. So we're gonna click OK and then it'll take a little minute to work. All right, guys, so it took a little while, but now we are inside our GAMP4 container. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And since this is based on a Linux container, we now have like a Linux terminal here. So we can look in our directory, which is over here. We can mess around with stuff. We can make a directory. And then you see on the left, it pops up. So let's try compiling our GAMP4 application here in the Docker container. All right, now we're gonna make our GAMP4 application using CMake. So what we can do is make directory build, let's call it Docker build. Change into that directory. And then we're going to run CMake. So CMake. So CMake finished configuring, so now we can clear and we can run make, which is gonna compile everything. Press enter. So as you guys can see from the output, it successfully built our GAMP4 project and we did not have GAMP4 installed anywhere. We're just running it inside of Docker. So this is really nice. With VS Code, you could theoretically develop your GAMP4 application completely in this Docker container. Like here in my include directory, I have all my header files. You can create a new one. So you may have to download the C++ extension here on VS Code, but this is not a bad way to develop GAMP4 applications. As you can see here, we have some really nice syntax highlighting. So if I go ahead and write include, I can go to the GAMP4 directory, and this is all the header files. So I could do uh, G4, let's see here, G4 V action user actual initialization. And then we can do class action init g4 user action g4v. So as you guys can see, it's like really nice syntax highlighting. This is a really great way to develop GM4 applications. So this isn't perfect though. There's a couple issues that we're gonna run into here. So here we are in our build folder. We're gonna check in here and we're, let's try to run g4 brems. So I'll go G4 Brems. So yeah, guys, here we see our first error. Um, it's trying to open a UI with Qt or one of these other options, but Docker has a very hard time connecting to the graphics processor. But you can run GAMP4 programs in the terminal and you can see some output on the console, but it's hard to get that visualization working correctly. All right, guys, well, if we can't use visualization, let's try to do just a terminal application here. So I created a Mac file called init.mac and just one single command, run initialize. So this is gonna initialize the run manager in Jant 4. 
So if we go here to our Docker build directory, here we see we got init.mac right here, and we also have g 4 params are executable. So if you've seen my previous video, I configured it so that if you put a Mac file as the second argument, it will automatically run that Mac file. So this Mac file won't start up any visualization. It will just start our run manager. So let's run g 4 brems init.mac. All right, so here we run into our second issue with Dockerizing Jant4 data sets. So Jant4 on its own doesn't come with these data sets, and a lot of Jant4 applications depend on these data sets for certain things that you're modeling. So the Jant4 official image does not come with these data sets. So in order to get these data sets, I have found a different Docker image created by somebody. And in this image, we have not only Jant4, but the data sets included as well. And so this is what it's called. Let's try this Docker image instead. So first we're going to get out of our container. We go down to the bottom left corner again and reopen the folder locally. All right, so here's our Docker file. We're going to delete this. We'll go ahead and copy this. Paste it in there. So this Docker image is a complete Jam4 runtime. Now, the one thing that I found at, while testing this image is that I have to set a certain environment variable. There was a little part that didn't seem to be working quite right. So once I added this line, everything worked great. So now I'm gonna reopen this in the container. So go down here again, reopen in container. So I'm running into some issues. Uh, we can try deleting our Docker build and recreating it. That usually seems to work. So we'll delete that. Awesome guys, looks like everything configured correctly here in our CMake output. So what we can do, we'll clear, and then let's look in our directory. All right, so now that we've rebuilt everything, let's try running our application again. Perfect guys, so as you can see from this output here, um, Jant4 initialized correctly, it ran an application correctly. This specific application doesn't do much, but you can see it registered all the physics correctly here and we don't have any errors. So, so let's say you develop an entire Jant4 application here, you could run it with Docker. So in conclusion here, you guys, there are some pros and cons of using Docker with Jant4. The pros are extremely fast setup. So as you can see there, we literally took about five seconds to start developing our Jant4 project. We didn't even have to install Jant4 at all. We were just running in our container and it was really easy to use, really nice. Another pro is it doesn't use up any memory. So the whole Jant4 installation is pretty big. I don't know how many gigabytes it is, but using Docker, it doesn't actually take up any memory. It does use a lot of the CPU and a lot of RAM, but it doesn't take up any memory, which is nice. Uh, thirdly, it's very portable. So if you completely Dockerize your Jant4 application, you can push your project to Docker Hub and anyone could go ahead and pull it. And on their own computer, they could use your Jant4 application. So if you want to distribute your application to other people to use, Docker is the way to go for sure. As far as cons, it can be hard to get used to using Docker if you're not familiar with Linux or you get some errors like I did. You have to get used to running something in a container instead of on your physical computer. Uh, but once you get past that, if you can get used to working with Docker, it can be a really good tool. And then the second con is it's really hard to configure visualization. So Jant4 relies on OpenGL a lot of the time, which directly communicates with your computer's uh, graphics processor. And Docker can't really cross that boundary from software to hardware very well. So yeah, guys, hopefully this helps you get started with using Jant4 with Docker. If you want to see more videos like this, please leave a comment or leave a like. And please consider supporting me on one of those websites I have linked down below. And good luck with your Jant4 developing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys later.